Why is impression formation important? Impressions play an important part of our day-to-day -day lives. They help us navigate the various social settings that we find ourselves in and also help us evaluate people who communicate with us or to us. During elections, we might form a positive or negative impression of a particular political candidate based on how they look and behave. This might influence who we decide to vote for. Likewise, when we meet new people at a party, we seem to be able to quickly get some sense about who we want to spend time with. Impressions also matter beyond our evaluations of other people. While we're busy forming impressions of other people, other people are busy forming impressions about us and the impressions that people form can affect the opportunities and experiences that we have. For example, whether we get offered a particular job that we want, or whether somebody wants to spend time with us and talk to us at a party. Now, social media is possibly the most self-evident example of how people try to manage the impression that others form about them. When you choose your profile photo, or perhaps what you post in an update, often you're thinking about what other people might think about you. So, impression formation is generally understood to be the process by which people combine information about others to make overall judgments about those others. So what are the possible ways that we might form impressions? Well, originally there were two main models or theories for how we form impressions. The algebraic models and the configurational model. So let's talk about the algebraic models first. Anderson was the main proponent of the algebraic models of impression formation. He thought that impressions were formed on the basis of the mechanical combination of information that we know about a person. Anderson proposed that there could be three different ways that this information could be combined. The first of these was the summative model, the second, the averaging model, and the third, he called the weighted averaging model. To illustrate how these models work and the differences between them, let's consider an example. I want you to imagine that you're at a party. At this party, you meet somebody for the first time. Let's call him Bob. Almost immediately, we notice a few positive things about Bob. He's funny, he's clever, and he's pretty good looking. We also notice that he's not very polite, and unfortunately, he has a poor taste in music. Now, we like each of these attributes to a different extent. We can represent our reactions to each of these attributes with a rating of likability. So, we feel most positively about the attributes of being funny and clever, and a bit less positively about being good looking. We're not totally shallow after all. While we don't like the attribute of not being polite very much, we really don't like someone having a poor taste in music, because otherwise we could end up listening to a lot of dodgy music. According to the summative model of impression formation, we could arrive at an overall impression of Bob by simply adding all of our reactions or likability ratings up and we arrive at an overall impression of three. Nice to meet you, Bob. That must mean we like you. According to Anderson's averaging model of impression formation, however, we could also arrive at an overall impression of Bob by averaging our likability ratings. We just take the overall sum of the ratings and divide by the number of ratings. So we take three and divide that by five, as we know five attributes about Bob. This gives us an impression of 0.6 for Bob. Hmm. It's still a positive impression, so we must still like Bob. The third possibility, according to Anderson, was the weighted averaging model. This is based on the idea that each attribute that a person possesses is associated not only with our likability rating, but also with a weight that represents how important that attribute is in a particular context. For example, being funny and polite might be important in a social setting because those attributes help us have a nice time together. However, if you're going for brain surgery, you probably wouldn't give much weight to being funny and polite. You're much more interested in your surgeon being clever and skillful. So we could use these weights to modify the likability ratings in the following way. For each attribute, we multiply the likability rating with its associated weight. For example, we take the positive three for the attribute of funny and multiply that by three and so on for each of the other attributes. We then sum up all of these weighted likability ratings and take the average by dividing by the number of traits, which in this case is five. This gives us an overall impression of 1.4. Whew, that took a bit of a mental arithmetic. Anderson tested these three models by systematically varying each of these bits of information under controlled settings in the lab. His research suggests that, perhaps surprisingly, the weighted averaging way of forming impressions is the best match for the impressions that people actually formed. But is this really the case? 
If it was, wouldn't there be long pauses at parties whenever people met for the first time? Wouldn't people with calculator watches be at a massive social advantage? Well, while it appears that the weighted averaging model describes the impressions that people form, it doesn't necessarily tell us about the actual processes they use to arrive at those impressions. So let's talk about the configurational model of impression formation. The configurational model of impression formation is based on Gestalt principles, or the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. According to this model, people combine information they receive about someone into an overall impression that's quite different from the simple sum of reactions to the individual items of information about that person. The reason why this happens is because people's traits are not all used in the same way to form an impression. Ash thought that there were two main types of traits or characteristics, central traits, which are more influential, and peripheral traits, which take on a different meaning in the context of different central traits. So let's do a quick activity to try and demonstrate the effect of these two different types of traits. Let's imagine that you're at another party. At this party, you meet another person for the first time. Let's call him Mike. In a second, you're going to see a list of traits or attributes that describe Mike. When you read this list, I want you to quickly form an impression and then rate Mike on an additional attribute that's not in the list. Once you've done this, we'll spend some time talking about this model of impression formation.